ourselves up a little bit so here we go we're going to change to degrees all right so we'll do a couple of these so let's say we have 100 degrees and we have negative 40 degrees oh those are already degrees we're going to change the directions we're going to change to radians we're going to change these to radian measures because remember, in our unit now that we're beginning, several chapters of trigonometry, we'll have angles that are in degrees and we'll have angles that are in radians and we'll want to be able to change back and forth. So anybody remember how to do this? Change to radians. Well, it involves cross multiplying, but first we have to build the proportion. So we're going to start with pi equal to 180. Remember that? Pi equals 180 degrees. So then I put the 100 over here underneath the degree measure, and I want to know how many radians that is. Remember this relationship right here, guys, hugely important. You got to remember that. If you remember that, you can do these problems. Now we'll cross multiply. So 100 pi equals 180x. So x equals 100 pi over 180. Remember when you reduce, you can get rid of the zeros. So we have 10 over 18, which is 5 pi over 9. Right? So can we do the same thing with this one? Yes, so we'll say pi equals 180, that's what we start with. Then where are you going to put the negative 40? Under the 180. So negative 40 pi equals 180x. So I'll reduce that and I end up with negative Two pi over nine. Is that okay with everybody? All right, now we'll go the other way. So now we'll change two degrees. So we're going to start with radian measures. So how about? three of these. 2 pi over 3, 7 pi over 9, and 4. These two are incredibly simple. This one involves a little more work, but these two are easy. What did I have boxed right here that I said was so important? Pi is 180. So see this guy right here? I'm going to think of him as 180. Now, what's 180 divided by 3? 60. 60. What's 60 times 2? 120. 120. So the answer is 120 degrees. 
This will be on a no calculator part of tests and quizzes. So it is important that you, you know, get this basic arithmetic. You got it, it's easy. Same thing here. That pi right there is 180, right? That's 180. So when we divide it by nine, what's 180 divided by nine? 20 times seven. 140 degrees. So for these two problems, the changing from radians to degrees, pi is 180. That's the key. That's the key for this one too. But because there's no pi to substitute into like there was here, we're going to do what we did before. Where will the 4 go? Under the pi. Under the pi. And now we'll do our cross multiply exactly the way we did before. So pi x equals 720 and x equals 720 over pi degrees. Done. Don't do anything else to it. That's the answer. What do you think? Are you okay with that? Changing from degrees to radians and radians to degrees. The other big idea, we talked about quite a few things, but the other really big idea involves arc length. So we have a circle that looks like this. different things. So let's say this is two, this is five, what's that? This is one and a half, this is eight, what's that? This is ten, this is six, what's that? So in terms of these pictures, this is called the central angle. That's the radius, obviously, and that is the arc length. Anybody remember our formula for arc length? Arc length equals radius times radians. We talked about that. That should look familiar to you. Arc length equals radius times radians. So if we use that formula, we should be able to solve all of these problems. So arc length equals radius times radians. Does that look okay to everybody? Arc length equals radius times radians. So x equals 8 divided by 1.5. I need to do that arithmetic over here. That's 8 divided by 3 halves. 8 times 2 thirds. I got 16 thirds. You divide it in, or uh, type it in your calculator and come out 5.33. Right, what's this one going to say? Arc length equals radius times radians. So 6 equals 10x. So x equals 6 tenths or 3 fifths or 0.6, however you want to write it. Easy one. Arc length equals radius times radians. So the answer is 10. Now you might recall that the only way these get, I mean, if you know that formula, these are so easy. The only way they get tricky is when you have a problem like this. makes that a little trickier. 
the angle needs to be in radians. So we do what we did a minute ago. We change 30 degrees into radians. And how do we do that? We start with what fundamental idea? Pi equals 180. And then since that's a degree, we put it right here. So 30 pi equals 180x. So x equals 3 18 which is 1 pi over 6. Okay? Now, that is not the answer to the question. You aren't done. What is pi over 6? It's this radian measure, right? So to get arc length, it's 5 times pi over 6. Yep, 5 pi over 6 would be the answer. Radius times radian. Radius times radian. That is a two-step problem. You have to remember the angle must be in radians. Okay? Hi. All right. So one more kind of problem. In this one, we didn't spend much time on, so this will be kind of new, but I think we can do it. Without a calculator, let's find the sine of 30 degrees. Now, Mrs. Ford gave you a gold sheet some time ago. Wasn't it gold? I think it's gold. Yeah. And there were some things on there we had to memorize, right? So this problem involves, and it's time to have that memorized now, okay? We'll be having a quiz this week. So some things that this problem involves that we have to have memorized. First of all, so Katoa, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Now sine is other things too, like y over r, but in terms of right now, that's good if we just remember opposite over hypotenuse. Now we also have a 30 degree angle. 30 degrees is special because of a 30, 60, 90 relationship. I am not gonna ask you to find the sine of 17 degrees without a calculator. But 30, 60, 90, 45, 45, 90, those are special. We should be able to do those without a calculator. So here's what we do. We're going to set up our coordinate axis system We always start measuring, unless it's a navigation problem where we're using a compass, we always start measuring right here. So 30 degrees would look like this. This is a 30 degree angle. Now Mrs. Ford said something incredibly important and in your kind of hazy, let's get back into the swing of school mode, you may have missed it. When I measure my angles, I always start right here on the positive x-axis. The only exception to that is navigation. So if I'm a ship sailing or a plane flying, then I start measuring up here. But always in math, in regular mathematics, angles are measured from right here. So this is a 30 degree angle. I am now going to drop a perpendicular straight down, forming a right triangle. If that's 30 and that's 90, how big is that one? There is our special little 30, 60, 90 triangle, and we will pick up here tomorrow if I remember. So I will see you tomorrow.
Now wait, we just did some good stuff. I know, but like the other classes,